Hey everyone, thank you for joining me for another tutorial. I'm Morty from eifeed.com, your uh, source for Elementor inspiration. If this is your first time here, I'm sharing experiments in Elementor. Uh, you can find the JSON files in the description to download using your own projects. If you want to get an update every time a new tutorial is up, subscribe and hit the bell icon. Feature Focus is a new series where I take like a specific feature or widget or element in Elementor and I experiment with it, I try different stuff, uh, try to push it to the edge with design and different creative ideas and of course share everything here in this channel with you. Okay, let's start the demonstration. This is the actual Elementor page. You can see all of the effects right here in Elementor. I'm not using any CSS codes, everything is just pure Elementor widgets. You can see all of the buttons, uh, the 3D effect is still a little glitchy, but Elementor will probably uh, fix it soon, like always. This is like an idea for a, a pop-up menu, maybe, full screen menu, categories. I'll show you in a second behind the scenes and you can see all of the different effects I used. This one is, I love this one. Very uh, 3D effect. Pretty easy to create. Okay, so first of all, this one is a combination of the widget call to action and the transform effects. So I tried different ones. For this one you have rotate on hover. It's on six. So the rotation is not too uh, not too much. Duration. I like the animations pretty slow. Uh, 600, 900 milliseconds, something like that. And you can see I also played with the actual uh, call to action settings. So you have the hover effects, so it grows, and also you have an overlay color, and this also, it has a different transition rate, it has 600 milliseconds. It makes it more interesting when one effect moves fast and the other one moves slowly. It's a good combination. You can see maybe this one. So it also has the call to action effects with the hover, the same effects. I like the zoom in ones, but you can just try any other effect and see how it works together with the transform. This one has an offset. I do it with percentages just because I do everything with percentages or VHVW and not pixels. So it makes everything work together well for uh, or mobile, although this is not very mobile friendly, obviously <laughs> any hover effect is not mobile friendly, so you should take that in mind when you use them. So the first ones are pretty straightforward. They have only one effect and only on hover, so normal stays the same. In hover, you just put one effect, and when you combine it with the call to action effects, it makes this very uh, beautiful and aesthetically pleasing animation. This one, for example, has both uh, rotate and offset in the transform effects. So originally, I just I chose the transform effect because it's uh, I I try to only make tutorials on stuff that are not in beta that are that you can use straight away. Um, and then that won't go to too many changes until this uh, tutorial is up. So that's why I chose transform and I just wanted to play with it and to see if I can combine it uh, with different elements, different uh, widgets, just to see the possibilities. So in here you can see on the hover we have rotate. 
and offset together. And also I changed the anchor point to left and bottom. So as you can see, the effects start from this point, the left and bottom, and then the rotate uh, rotates from that point and also the offset moves up from this point. So you can do a lot of different stuff just by changing the anchor points. For this one, you can see the anchor point is still in the middle, but you have offset and scale together. So for the buttons, um, buttons are also, so I tried to take elements and widgets that have some kind of hover effect already, like buttons and, uh, um, and call to action. That way, when you mix uh, two animations together, it makes stuff very interesting, as you can see here. So we have the original hover uh, color change in the button itself, and I also gave it a transform, rotate, and offset also. So you have the, um, the first row is like just very basic stuff. This one has the button effect with the hover animation. So this one is buzz. So you combine uh, the buzz element with the offset element when the button goes just a little bit up, upwards, and it just becomes very uh, fun and something to play with. So this one has the hang element. So after it offsets, it goes up or down a little bit. The bob, same, same effect, just on a different, um, different shape. This one is all over the place, but you get you get the picture. Uh, so this one, I wanted to make something that later on you can just put it in a pop-up menu and um, you can see the other tutorial I have here in this channel on creating a full, uh, a full screen menu with a pop-up. It's practically the same. Just this one uses the text path uh, element as a button, like as a menu option. So, and Again, I tried to find uh, different, uh, like very interesting uh, widgets to work with and combine them with transform because transform by itself, it's okay, uh, but it's not, the animation is not interesting enough, in my opinion. Uh, so combining it with something else that has also animations, it just makes everything work a lot better. So as you can see here, we have just like a, a line um, path type for the text path widget and for the style again hover so you have a hover effect when it turns white and the transition is uh, 300 milliseconds I didn't even use any hover animations just this one and the movement itself is with transform you can see I changed the anchor point in the normal settings because I wanted to hold in one place and then when you hover it stays in the same place. Because when it's a menu, you always want it to stay aligned on the left. Even if you do animations, if it breaks like from the, that line, that visual line right here, it's not as good for user experience because usually people read text and they, they look for that straight line because it's, uh, it helps them navigate faster. I gave it a rotation and offset and I played with it and gave each one of them different settings just to make it a bit more interesting. So it's a different rotation and different offset. As you can see, each one moves in a different, slightly different um, shape and direction. So I wanted to make it more interesting. So just uh, I gave the text a low number of uh, letter spacing just to make the letters touch each other and it's nice with the uh, stroke with the text stroke this one is just a photo an image and a heading and you can just make it like a category on the website and uh, once people click the 
photo gets larger and I think it's just it's fun you know uh, hover effects usually always work only on desktop so it's not very uh, mobile friendly but still the desktop experience is very important and when you have a big screen people have more time uh, and they take they, their time and these animations are very fun uh, and people love to, love to play with it it makes the website more interactive and uh, makes people stay longer on the website you need to try not to not to go uh, too too much with animations because um, too much animations just take from the attention of the website itself and it's very important that people read the content and engage with it and not just uh, have fun effects everywhere that take the attention from the actual content so this one is very simple it's just a heading and you have transform um, I offset it in the beginning because I didn't want it to be in the same edge as the, as the photo just to make the, the design more dynamic and the hover just moves it to another point you can see just move to the right and then when you go to the um, photo the photo has some more animations so uh, the anchor point is left and up so this point stays in place and it moves downwards that's why you have a lot of empty space here under uh, for the picture to grow to and hover and here you have rotate offset and scale together and you can use even four of them and you can see it's not as long as you do it very minimal the numbers are not too big the movements are not too explosive uh, if you if you play with it like this uh, it looks very fine and the speed is great everything is just it's fun to play with it just make, makes the website more fun uh, this one was a bit more complicated <laughs> I had this idea and I wanted to put like 3d cards and, and move them in a 3d way um, and to use the transform uh, element to do it so the headlines are here just just to make it a concept and not just put the cards um, floating in air just to have an idea so it looks better for the tutorial um, and you have the cards each one is an icon um, it, it doesn't have any hover effects I didn't use any of the hover effects just a transform nothing else um, and you can see it looks very 3d it looks like um, almost like a 3d animation so I played a lot with the elements here the rotation of the 3d uh, the perspective tool is very important you need to keep the perspective in place or it just looks like this you see so if you put too much perspective it looks 2d if you don't put enough uh, it starts going crazy so usually 100 I saw it was a good number maybe a little less if you want to make it more 3d make give it more depth uh, but somewhere between 50 and 100 and the rotation is is just to to in here it's in the normal situation so where do you want the rotation to start and then in the hover where do you want it to end and that makes it move in one direction and not the other so you can see most of them it's exactly the same honestly it's just uh, playing with the rotation with the 3d rotation and the regular one and maybe some scale because like when you take a card and throw it um, I wanted to make the illusion of depth like it moves a little bit for, uh, forward yeah so when you make it when when stuff goes forward they also get smaller so that's why I put the scale uh, also and of course a, a card usually doesn't rotate like from the middle when you throw it so I wanted to make um, the illusion that it was thrown from one of the angles so that's why it's it's good to use uh, the anchor points like where do you want uh, you can think about it like um, like you you put a nail on one of the corners and then all the animation happens but that nail keeps the uh, the object in in place so usually it's straight in the middle and every animation you make 
just changes uh, and the middle stays in focus. But sometimes you don't want the middle to be the anchor point, you want to move it around, so you can just use this um, to easily move it. That's it. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. If you have any questions, um, again, you can download the JSON file for this uh, specific page um, in the comments. You can just upload it to your own websites, play with it. Uh, let me know if you need any help. If you have questions, I'm here to help you. I'll be doing a lot of these experiments and tutorials. So if you want to get uh, an update every time a new tutorial is up, subscribe, hit the bell icon. Um, I would love to hear what you think about it, about this series, the series, the feature focus series in general. Any other things you would like me to experiment with, uh, just let me know in the comments. I would love to. I, I always look for new ideas. So that would be great. Don't forget to visit eif.com. It collects the best elemental websites online. If you have a website you're proud of, you can uh, submit it on the website as well. That would be awesome. And if you're looking for inspiration uh, that is elementary specific, you can go to eif.com. You have beautiful works there uh, by amazing people. And uh, you can just see what people can do with elementary and get a lot of inspiration from it for your own projects. That's it. Until next time, stay inspired.